As the old man in the chariot behind gave a signal, Aditha Karikalan turned his horse and went near the chariot in which he was riding. Child! Karikala! I intend to take leave of you at this place and go to Tyrakovalur. Before I go, I have to tell you some important things. Just get off your horse and come to the platform under that royal tree. Said. So be it, grandfather. Aditha Karikalan jumped down from his horse. The old man also got down from the chariot. Both went to the platform under the royal tree. Then Parthipendra looked at Kanamaran and said, It's a good time. I was afraid that this old man would come along with us saying I will touch you. I thought that if he continued like that, he would be pushed into the current of the river and completely beaten. Said Kanamaran. Both of them were laughing and enjoying themselves at their talk. On seeing Aditha Karikalan, Thirukovalar Malay Amon, a native of the hill country, said. Aditha. You were born twenty-four years ago today. You were born in my palace in Tirakovalar. I remember the celebrations that took place at that time as if it were yesterday. People from your clan, people from my village, and many small kings from the Chola country and Thonday country came. There were thirty thousand soldiers from all of them. I can't describe the feast they all had. Even during your father's consecration, such feasts and galas did not take place. All the things in my treasure that had been accumulated for a hundred years from the time of my forefathers were exhausted in that three-day celebration. If only he had been born a girl. They talked and shouted. Manatee kings and princes from Sri Lanka to Vindhya Parvatam did penance to give their women to your father. They were so interested because of the fact that he was as handsome as Arjuna and Cupid and that he belonged to the Chola dynasty. I finally got to have your father as a son-in-law. I and a few others insisted that your great Patanar Rajaditya should be named after him. Finally they combined the two and named you Aditha Karikalan. Look there. Aditya. The temple peak of Tirunavalar is visible. It is the birthplace of Nambai Aurasundara Murthy. Twenty-five years ago today, your great father Rajaditya Kalar camped there. I have heard about so many warriors who appear in stories and epics. I have seen so many warriors in this heroic Tamil Nadu. But no other warrior like Rajaditya has been seen or heard of. Anyone who has seen him fight on the battlefield will say so. Here he was preparing to gather a huge army and invade the northern region. He was determined to defeat Kanaradeva, the king of the two regions, and raise his capital Maniakatam to the ground. Just as Emperor Vatabi, the uncle of the Pallava clan, destroyed the city of Maniyekata, only if the city of Maniyekata was completely destroyed would the two regions be able to destroy it. Rajadityar thought that Kadam would be included, and that he too would be as famous as the Mamalas. Was it an easy task to gather a large army for that? The Mamalas would say that they mustered an army for seven years. Rajadityar said that he did not need that long, three or four years would suffice. To give he chose that the territory of Dakanda was the country between the Kitalam River and the Tenpena River. Cavalry and three armies of known artillerymen were encamped here. Training battles often took place within the troops stationed like this. When elephants collide with elephants, it seems like an earthquake has arrived. The sound of the cavalcades as they march past with their valiant soldiers is like the raging of a deluge time ocean. As the players practice shooting arrows from their bows, the sky is obliterated by the barrage. It seems that the end of the world is near when thousands of soldiers march out in unison to attack the enemy forces, shouting naval low naval. People will come in droves to see all this fun. When elephants collide with elephants, it seems like an earthquake has arrived. The sound of the cavalcades as they march past with their valiant soldiers is like the raging of a deluge time ocean. As the players practice shooting arrows from their bows, the sky is obliterated by the barrage. It seems that the end of the world is near when thousands of soldiers march out in unison to attack the enemy forces, shouting naval low naval. People will come in droves to see all this fun. When elephants collide with elephants, it seems like an earthquake has arrived. The sound of the cavalcades as they march past with their valiant soldiers is like the raging of a deluge time ocean. 
As the players practice shooting arrows from their bows, the sky is obliterated by the barrage. It seems that the end of the world is near when thousands of soldiers march out in unison to attack the enemy forces, shouting naval low naval. People will come in droves to see all this fun. As the players practice shooting arrows from their bows, the sky is obliterated by the barrage. It seems that the end of the world is near when thousands of soldiers march out in unison to attack the enemy forces, shouting naval low naval. People will come in droves to see all this fun. As the players practice shooting arrows from their bows, the sky is obliterated by the barrage. It seems that the end of the world is near when thousands of soldiers march out in unison to attack the enemy forces, shouting naval low naval. People will come in droves to see all this fun. The people of this Thirumunapati country and middle country are very good and brave. When the army was gathered here, their agriculture suffered greatly. They didn't care about all that. Rajaditya dug many lakes in these two countries to thank such people. He also arranged for a new river to be cut from Kaladam and filled in Viranarayanapurathu Lake. Aditya Kadampur Sambhavarian was the one who benefited greatly from the wealth of that lake. If I compare the submissive state of Rajaditya back then and the wealth he has achieved today, I am very surprised. Aditha Karikalan interrupted, Grandfather. What is your concern about Sambhavariyar Sirak? Tell me about the battle at Thakholam. When did the huge army that had gathered on the shores of Ketalak leave here? Despite making so many advances and my great Patana being such a great warrior, why did our forces fail at Thakholam? Isn't he the one who fought in the war? So you must have seen it firsthand. He said. Yes, I was on that battlefield too. That's what I'm going to tell you about. He left for the south with that great army. Buthaka, the king of the Ganges, also joined Kanaradava with his great army. Just as the North Sea and the South Sea came together, the double zone Sanyam and the Gunga Budagan Sanyam together became a great ocean. In that ocean there were thousands of elephants and whales and tens of thousands of horses. It seemed that the Sina Samudram, which was raging forward like the seven seas raging together during the deluge, would completely submerge the South. Our spies, who knew the details of the army and rushed ahead at full speed, announced it. Just as the North Sea and the South Sea came together, the double zone Sanyam and the Gunga Budagan Sanyam together became a great ocean. In that ocean there were thousands of elephants and whales and tens of thousands of horses. It seemed that the Sina Samudram, which was raging forward like the seven seas raging together during the deluge, would completely submerge the South. Our spies, who knew the details of the army and rushed ahead at full speed, announced it. Just as the North Sea and the South Sea came together, the double zone Sanyam and the Gunga Budagan Sanyam together became a great ocean. In that ocean there were thousands of elephants and whales and tens of thousands of horses. It seemed that the Sina Samudram, which was raging forward like the seven seas raging together during the deluge, would completely submerge the South. Our spies, who knew the details of the army and rushed ahead at full speed, announced it. It seemed that the Sina Samudram, which was raging forward like the seven seas raging together during the deluge, would completely submerge the south. Our spies, who knew the details of the army and rushed ahead at full speed, announced it. It seemed that the Sina Samudram, which was raging forward like the seven seas raging together during the deluge, would completely submerge the south. Our spies, who knew the details of the army and rushed ahead at full speed, announced it. But this is also good in a way, said Emperor Parintaka. Rather than making our armies travel far and fight with the enemy in the enemy's country with the fatigue of travel, the emperor said, it is a better way of war to draw the enemy's army close to our country and encircle them on all sides. He gave permission to travel only after knowing that it was near. With permission or not, Rajadityar set out. 300,000 foot soldiers, 50,000 horsemen, 12,000 war elephants, 2,000 chariots, 320 generals and 32 petty kings joined the great army. I had the privilege of being one of them. After three days' march, our forces and the enemy's forces met on the field of battle at a place called Thakholam, 
two ears north of Kanji. Adida. In the Puranas we have heard about the battle between Devendra and Vridrasura. We also know about the Ramaravana War and the Pandavakoravar War. Those who witnessed the battle at Dakolam will say that all those wars were insignificant. The enemy's forces were about twice as large as ours. Five lock warriors and 30,000 war elephants were in Akanium. There seems to have been. What if? A general like your great master Rajadityar was not in that army. So Viralakshmi and Jayalakshmi seemed to be on our side. Gunga King Budagan was the one who made the scheme and executed it. Suddenly the Badakan let the flag of peace fly on his elephant and raised both hands above his head and shouted Saranam Saranam. He brought it saying that. At that time Rajaditya himself was recently present. Budagan must have done so only after seeing his elephant's ambari with the tiger flag flying. Rajaditya, the great hero, was relieved when he saw an enemy king saying surrender. He wanted to know if it was the dual realm emperor himself who was asking for peace to end the war or if it was only Budukan who would break away from him and join us. So he chanted Sanganath and made the bodyguard standing around him withdraw. Budagan signaled the elephant he was riding to come closer to the elephant he was riding. Budagan came with a handshake until he came near Rajaditya. Rajaditya also saw tears welling up in his eyes. This made his mind even more relaxed. All those who pray and fight. At that time, Rajaditya did not remember the great poet of Tamil Nadu. Seeing the tears, he melted. Even more recently, Bhuthyukana came and asked, What said he? he asked. His reply disgusted Rajaditya. Bhutukan said that he told Kanaradevan to surrender if he knew that the defeat of the dual zone forces was certain, and as he refused, he decided to separate and surrender alone. Hearing this, Rajaditya scolded him severely. While telling him that he cannot have such a Nisan in his party and to go back, the goblin realizes the terrible act of deceit in the blink of an eye. He took the bow and arrow that he kept hidden and put the bow on the bow and shot the arrow. When the deadly poisoned arrow unexpectedly shot through Rajaditya's chest, he fell down. For a while the soldiers standing around did not know what had happened, as no one expected such a trick. The only thing that fell on their ears was Rajaditya's order to Budagan to go back. At once Buthugan chased away his elephant and ran away. I assembled the forces on that hilltop. From time to time I attacked the enemies who had reached this Kitala river. However, the enemies who came then did not leave this area for many years. They were staying here and there and giving trouble. Kanchi Nagar was in their possession. Three years ago you came to this side after defeating Virapandayan and saved the city of Kanchi. Aditha Karikalan interrupted again, Grandfather. I already knew all this. But no matter how many times I hear about the Takola War and the history of Rajadityar, I never get tired of it. Now why did you remind me about Rajadityar? Tell me. He said. Child. Your great father Rajadityar had a desire to expand the Chola Empire from Sri Lanka to the Ganges River. He died without fulfilling that desire. The whole country is talking about my grandson Aditya Karikalan, a great hero like him. People all over the world are talking that you are going to achieve what he wanted to achieve. But I have reminded you of his history so that you, like Rajaditya, may not be deceived by the deception. Grandfather. My great father lost his life on the battlefield due to the treachery of his enemies. Why are you reminding me of that now? I did not go to the battlefield. I did not go among the enemies who could deceive me. Am I not going to see my father's best friends? In what way and for what are they going to deceive me? Said Aditha Karigalan. Listen, Karikala. Thiruvalovar Puruman, who said that the enemy's praying hands and weeping tears can be a deadly weapon, also said that the inner hatred is more deadly than the outer one. Fear the enemy like a sword, fear the enemy like. Listening, communicate with the enemy. There is no need to fear enemies who oppose you openly like a sword. He said that enemies who pretend to be friends should be feared. Baby. You are now going among enemies who pretend to be merry. 
you go without asking me to stop you. You have been called to say that there has been a dispute about some kingdom and that you are going to settle it. I also know that Sam Bavarian has invited you with the intention of tying one of his daughters to your neck. But I don't know what their real intention is either, you can't even know. There are many kings waiting in this land of India to give you a wife. This Sam Bavarian's daughter is not what she wants. I hear that they are going to make peace by dividing the kingdom into half for you and half for Madhurandha. I don't know if there is any gambling or intrigue in it. In any case, I will immediately go to Thirukovalar and collect all my security forces and stay at Velarangarai. If you have any doubts while in Sambhavariyar Palace, tell me immediately. At this time, Malay Aman saw that Aditha Karakalan's attention was not on him and had turned elsewhere. Grandpa! Look at that! The brave old man heard the words of Aditha Karakalan with confusion and looked in that direction.